talk about bifurcations of global invariant manifolds. Thank you, Dylan, and thanks to all the other organizers for uh, bringing me here and organizing this lovely uh, talk in Moscow. This is my first time in Russia, so I guess it's going to be a very nice experience. Um, okay, uh, this talk is all about uh, global invariant manifolds, uh, in particular global invariant manifolds of vector fields. Okay. Uh, Basically, we would like to know what happens when, uh, in the presence of a bifurcation, for, for example, of a differential equation, what happens to the global invariant objects in phase space, how they change, and how they uh, organize or reorganize uh, the phase space, uh, transforming or creating basins of attraction and uh, chaotic dynamics and so forth. Okay? Uh, basically, what we would like to know is uh, the organization of uh, global phase space in different scenarios. Okay, so let me start with the, with the very basics, okay? And then we will uh, uh, add some complexity on the subject. So, uh, we will work with a, uh, with a vector field, okay, this one here, F, that uh, will depend on parameters. Uh, we will work uh, in a three-dimensional phase space. Uh, we, we could have a, perhaps a, a vector of parameters and uh, the vector field is going to be sufficiently smooth, as smooth as, as we want or as we need. Uh, there is a flow which is induced or defined by this vector field in, in phase space, we we'll call that a phi, although we won't be using it very often. And we will assume that it is a hyperbolic uh, equilibrium point of this vector field, that means when the vector field uh, it's equal to, to, to zero. And we will assume that it is hyperbolic in the, in the first part of, the, of this talk. That means that just the linear part of the vector field uh, uh, is enough to uh, say what is going on on a neighborhood of this equilibrium point in terms of the local dynamics. So uh, this linear part, the linearized part of the vector field is yes, given by book. this uh, Jacobian matrix. And we will assume we have these uh, eigenvalues. Uh, for this uh, equilibrium, there's going to be a positive, unstable eigenvalue, lambda u there, and a complex conjugate pair of uh, stable eigenvalues, that is with a negative real part. Okay. So uh, we will call this uh, equilibrium a subtle focus because it, it has a, a repelling end component and also a an attracting component and which is a uh, sparring fashion. Uh, and well, from the classical textbooks, we know that uh, under this setting, there's going to be an unstable manifold, which is going to be a one-dimensional uh, object here in phase space, which uh, is made of all the orbits that uh, diverge from the origin in uh, positive time. And there's going to be also a two-dimensional stable manifold, this Ws of this equilibrium, uh, and this uh, two-dimensional object uh, is made of all the trajectories that eventually uh, converge to this equilibrium. Okay. So basically, uh, a first approximation of these manifolds uh, can be made by, by taking this, uh, the linear, this linear approximations given by these uh, linear eigenspaces, okay, trivially from the, from the Jacobian matrix. Uh, but we are actually thinking of a non-linear uh, scenario. So these uh, manifolds will typically be uh, surfaces in some way. Uh, but we are also uh, thinking about global bifurcations. One of the most uh, uh, typical global bifurcations are homoclinic orbits. Okay, so a, homo a hom homoclinic orbit is basically an orbit which is uh, uh, which forms a loop to an equilibrium. It converges in both forward and backward time to this, uh, to this point. Uh, for example, here, uh, under certain variation of this uh, parameters beta in uh, our vector field, there's going to be a, a bifurcation value for this parameter, for example, when beta is equal to, equals to zero, when the, this loop uh, is formed. And there is also some genericity and transversality conditions that have to be satisfied. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but uh, in our scenario for our equilibrium point, 
uh, this uh, uh, connecting orbit, which is called gamma zero here, uh, uh, makes uh, some kind of excursion away from the equilibrium and then it comes back spiraling towards the equilibrium. Okay. And uh, because of, uh, of this nature, this, uh, this orbit is, uh, is actually in both these two manifolds because uh, it converges to the equilibrium in forward time and diverges from the equilibrium in forward time as well. So it's in the intersection of uh, WS and WU, the uh, stable and unstable manifold. So this is a homoping orbit to a hyperbolic equilibrium, as I said. Uh, the typical unfolding, that is what happens when one uh, perturbs our vector field of our system, uh, is the following. Uh, well, there are actually more options, but uh, the most uh, generic ones, in, in some way, are the following. Uh, there is a certain quantity here called uh, sigma, so-called saddle quantity, uh, which is telling us which one of the uh, contracting uh, uh, rates or uh, uh, repelling rates are bigger than, than the other. So uh, typically this, uh, this quantity is not going to be zero and when uh, this sigma is negative, uh, that is when the stable eigenvalues are larger in magnitude than the unstable one, uh, there is going to be a single stable periodic orbit uh, L beta here that bifurcates on one side of the, this bifurcation on one varies parameter beta um, and it's actually it's going to exist uh, just on one side of the bifurcation and not, and not on the other one okay you can see for example uh, when beta is negative uh, this branch of the unstable manifold uh, misses the equilibrium and, and eventually goes well probably to, to a minus infinity in a phase space at the moment of the bifurcation uh, this uh, this branch of the unstable manifold closes up here, forming the loop, and afterwards, uh, uh, it again pieces the, the equilibrium that goes upwards and eventually converges to this uh, periodic motion up here. Okay. Uh, there's also a second option that can happen when the sigma, this quantity, is positive, in which case one has a chaotic dynamics that actually is uh, present at the moment of the bifurcation here, when, when beta is equals to zero, uh, and this uh, chaotic uh, dynamics, there's a chaotic uh, object here filling a tubular neighborhood of this, uh, uh, of this homogenic orbit, okay? and uh, it is actually, uh, it's actually robust in the sense that when we, when we, if we break the homogenic loop, uh, the chaotic uh, object will persist on both sides of the bifurcation. Uh, in other case, this is uh, a co-dimension one phenomenon that means that we need just a variation of a single parameter to unfold and get the complete picture of, the, of this bifurcation. Okay. Uh, but one of the main hypotheses here is that our equilibrium is hyperbolic. Okay. What if the equilibrium is not hyperbolic? Okay. Well, uh, one of the simplest. Uh, cases of a homoclinic, of a combination of a homoclinic bifurcation and a non-hyperbolic equilibrium uh, can be given by this scenario which is uh, via a saddle node homoclinic bifurcation when we have for example uh, before the, the bifurcation we have two uh, uh, hyperbolic equilibria x1 and x2 uh, one of them for example here in this picture is a, an attracting equilibrium the other one is a saddle focus and as the bifurcating parameter uh, approaches zero, these two parameters, uh, these two equilibria, uh, move toward each other, and uh, in the limit they collide. Okay, and afterwards they disappear in a typical saddle node bifurcation. Um, but the thing is, at the moment of the saddle node, we have this connection, this uh, orbit here that comes from the equilibrium, and eventually it comes back on the other side, forming again a loop. Right? So we have effectively a saddle node homoclinic bifurcation. This is also known in certain uh, books or papers as a saddle node bifurcation on an invariant closed curve. Okay? Because of the, 
geometry of, of this process. And uh, since this is a, a non-hyperbolic equilibrium, uh, the one at the bifurcation, uh, um, uh, it has a one-dimensional center manifold. Okay. Uh, it still has a two-dimensional stable manifold here, which is uh, approximated or here sketched by this uh, little surface. Uh, but the, the homogeneic loop here it, it, uh, is part of the, of the starts here from the from the center manifold, and it comes back to the equilibrium uh, on one of the center manifolds on the other side, which is not actually uniquely defined on on this side. One can prove that, okay. Uh, but it, the main difference, for example, here is the the homogeneic loop belong to both, here in this case, to both the unstable manifold and the stable manifold. In this case, there, there is no unstable manifold, it's just a center manifold, which is not uniquely defined on, on this side of, the, of this surface. Uh, so that, that's a kind of a topological um, difference. Uh, anyway, this is still, I could have mentioned one bifurcation, that is one into the variation of a single parameter, okay, to understand all the, all the unfolding. Uh, so, Homogeneous bifurcations and uh, well, global bifurcations in general can be found in many uh, applied models. For example, from uh, uh, neural models to uh, and, or in the form of traveling ways in uh, reaction diffusion equations, for example, uh, or for example in laser models. Uh, I have taken this uh, laser model here, which is actually oops. Uh, these uh, equations here, where E uh, is a complex electric field, so in uh, practice we have a three-dimensional uh, real uh, phase space. Uh, and why taking this, this model and why taking these equations? Well, basically, uh, global bifurcations in general uh, do not have normal forms, okay, or global phenomena in general, so if we want to uh, actually uh, study, uh, for example, uh, global invariant manifolds on, uh, at uh, global bifurcations, uh, well, it, it is difficult because uh, we don't have this, uh, this normal form, this kind of a, uh, a model uh, vector fields that uh, give us all the, all the dynamics. So, uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, there are several uh, applied models that we can consider, for example, as this uh, laser model here. Uh, which is uh, it's a semiconductor laser, which is we have a, a laser which receives a light or an input from a second source, and then it it lights up, okay, after receiving this this uh, this, this input, and uh, well, in this case for this uh, laser model uh, we can. Uh, we can study its bifurcation diagram. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, bifurcation analysis in, the, in this paper about the, this model. And in particular, I want to focus on this uh, tooth shape uh, curve uh, called HOM here, which is actually a curve of homoclinic bifurcation in this, in this model. And you can see here, uh, this, uh, bifurc this uh, curve is uh, um, meeting this uh, black curve here which is divided in two segments, SG and SL. I'm going to explain just in a minute what, uh, what's the meaning of that. Uh, so as, uh, this black curve is a curve of uh, sudden node bifurcation of two equilibrium. Okay. And it's actually, and at this, uh, these two points, A1 and A2, we have that this, uh, uh, this curve of homotic uh, bifurcation in, uh, emanating uh, from uh, either of them. So I want to focus, uh, for example, uh, near this point A1, okay, and after some rescaling of parameters, we will uh, arrive to, uh, to this bifurcation diagram in here. So uh, we have this homogeneic curve here. Uh, at, this, uh, at any point uh, on this curve, there is a homogeneic bifurcation just at the same, as, uh, as I showed you before. Okay. Along this uh, black curve, uh, which is divided into two segments here. We have a sudden node bifurcation where two equilibria collide and then they disappear. Uh, but at this uh, central point, A1, we have the, the meeting of these two curves, the sudden node and a homoclinic uh, bifurcation curve. 
Okay. So actually, on this curve, on this segment SG, we happen to have this sudden node homoclinic bifurcation that I showed you before. Okay. And at this point A1, we have a combination of this scenario here and this scenario here in a codimension two bifurcation, a codimension two point. Okay. Okay, so, uh, well, that's actually what I wanted to say. So we had a homoclinic -like bifurcation to a hyperbolic equilibrium along this uh, home curve. Uh, we have a, a typical, classical, local saddle node bifurcation along this uh, segment SL, where L stands for local. Okay. And we have a saddle node homoclinic -like bifurcation, uh, the one that I showed you before, SG, where G stands for global. Okay, I'm going to explain that a little bit later. And the central point A uh, is it's called a non-central saddle node homoclinic bifurcation point. Okay, so let me show you uh, uh, what more or less a picture on this laser model. So on the first row we have the, the first kind of homoclinic bifurcation that I show you, just at the moment of the of the bifurcation. Uh, we have two equilibria, P and Q in this case. Uh, we have a homotic uh, bifurcation curve, gamma zero here, which is uh, coming from P and again uh, spiraling back towards the, the same equilibrium P. Okay. And uh, well, you can see here the enlargements, uh, how this, uh, the loop is formed. So we have these two equilibria, each one of them has a, a two dimensional stable manifold. Uh, in fact, well, Q is actually uh, an attractor, so it has uh, it has a three-dimensional basin of attraction. But in particular, it's going to have a so-called strong stable manifold, which is a two-dimensional uh, well, manifold that belongs to its uh, well, three-dimensional uh, uh, stable manifold. Okay, it's, it's still a surface here, which is just approximated by its local uh, its local version. Okay. Well, at the moment of a saddle node homoclinic bifurcation, so we can think of uh, these two equilibrium to uh, coming, uh, approaching each other. So at the moment of the bifurcation, we have a single equilibrium, which I will still will call, uh, call it P. Okay. And uh, this non-hyperbolic equilibrium has a center manifold, and the loop here, which is called gamma C, C stands for central. Uh, belongs to its center manifold and uh, it makes an excursion and it comes back, but it comes back uh, just on one side of this uh, local stable manifold. Okay, it, comes, it starts from one side, it makes a loop, and then it comes back on the other side. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, probably you can see it here. It's converging uh, from exactly from one side. So that's uh, the codimension one. Uh, side of node uh, homoclinic bifurcation, although one that, that is also called uh, side of node bifurcation on an invariant closed curve. And the third kind of uh, bifurcation on, a, on the, the bottom row, so we have here what's going on at this, this, uh, this uh, codimension uh, two point A1 here. So here uh, we still have a non hyperbolic equilibrium which still has a one dimensional center manifold and a two dimensional stable manifold. But uh, the homoclinic orbit, which is now called gamma NC, NC as non central, uh, well, it goes off and, and makes an excursion. And actually, it comes back along the two dimensional manifold here, along this surface. It's part of the, the, of this surface right now. Okay, at this moment, and that's a topological difference with the, with the previous case. And this is uh, a codimension two phenomenon because one needs a uh, variation of two parameters to unfold this the, the last uh, kind of uh, uh, homoclinic bifurcation that I show you. And uh, under certain generalistic conditions, uh, the unfolding of this codimension two singularity uh, is the following according to these sketches. So uh, I have, well, they have a, here a, a sketch uh, unfolding, a sketch bifurcation diagram. So, for example, we have here the, the curve home. So if one crosses home, for example, from region 3 to 4, here, 3, home, 4, uh, we have the, the same uh, homotype uh, 
bifurcation that I show you in one of the first slides. Okay, just in this case, a single stable perigorbic bifurcates on one side of the bifurcation. Here, there's the green curve gamma. Uh, on the other side, uh, if we cross this uh, from 4 to 1, or from 1 to 4, across uh, S, SL, okay, uh, we have a, for example, where is, uh, where is 1? Okay, on 1, there is just a single stable periodic orbit uh, gamma. At the moment of, uh, of when we are just on the, this segment SL, uh, a non-hyperbolic equilibrium appears suddenly, and then it, uh, it separates into two uh, uh, equilibria here in region uh, 4. We have P and Q here. And uh, that, that's a kind of a local sudden, uh, sudden node bifurcation. And on the curve SG from 1 to 2 here, uh, we have this, uh, this, uh, not, uh, this central sudden node homogeneous curve here, which is part of the center manifold of this uh, equilibrium. Okay, and in order to complete uh, this bifurcation diagram, one has to include this uh, uh, dotted line called head, which is the uh, head comes from uh, heterogeneity, uh, which is actually uh, the following phenomenon: when at the moment of uh, when it, one is the, when the parameter values are on this line head, uh, this uh, one branch of the unstable manifold of this equilibrium P will come back. It actually, it's going to converge to the uh, tractor Q, but it's going to lie on its uh, two-dimensional strong stable manifold here, this, uh, this uh, surface here. So at this moment, uh, this, uh, uh, the unstable manifold of this equilibrium P is no longer uh, a smooth, uh, completely smooth. Uh, okay, but uh, as I told you before, uh, we would like to uh, study two-dimensional objects in phase space because basically uh, all the one-dimensional uh, objects here are very well understood. Okay, we we can find this uh, bifurcation diagram in many textbooks and, and papers, and uh, we know what is going on basically on the level of the one-dimensional objects. So the question is, uh, what happens on the level of the higher-dimensional objects, which are also uh, filling the phase space? And they're all not only filling phase space, they're also separating different bases of attraction, for example. Okay? So we would like to understand how these uh, two-dimensional surfaces are organizing the global phase space. So just to give you an idea here, uh, I'm showing you uh, well, three cases, one for each of these uh, homogeneous bifurcations that I showed you before. In the first case, uh, we have these two uh, uh, hyperbolic equilibrium, uh, P and Q here. This, uh, a transparent blue surface is a representation of the, strong, uh, the stable manifold of P and if we uh, take a more transparent rendering of this same manifold we can see that somewhere inside it's lying the two-dimensional strong stable manifold of the second equilibrium Q okay? so they are kind of filling the phase space uh, in a not obvious way okay? at least in principle so geometrically, they seem to be very complicated surfaces, even though they're just topological disks. Okay. Um, so the question is, what happens uh, if we perturb these uh, homogeneous bifurcations? If we break these loops, uh, typically the global manifolds will reorganize each other in a different way. And uh, well, that's uh, the aim of this talk and this work. Okay. So we have uh, this, uh, all these cases. Okay, well, well, this is more or less what I will just show you, or what, is, what I talk to you. Uh, well, the topological and geometric changes of this uh, of these objects in phase space. When uh, you said they were disks, did you mean are they open disks or? Yes. Yes. They, they're open. They, they run to infinity. Yeah. Uh, they, they are bounded in this case, actually. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they accumulate on themselves. Or onto something else. Okay. Sorry, I'm <laughs> yeah. getting ahead of your talk. No, but that's a bit, that's a very good observation, actually. Um, okay, so uh, we have these surfaces, uh, uh, which uh, in one cases they might be bounded, in some other cases they might be uh, unbounded. That depends on the vector field we are working on, uh, and all the all the objects that may be around in phase space. 
Uh, the question is how they separate basis of attractions of different uh, objects that might appear or, or disappear by bifurcations and basically what's the overall organization of phase space. So, uh, well, here's a dilemma. So, uh, what would one typically do uh, on global or bifurcations in general? One would like to work with a normal form of a bifurcation. In this case, for homogeneous bifurcations or global bifurcations in general, uh, one cannot find uh, a normal form for the entire object in phase space or something that, for a vector field that uh, accounts for the entire vector field or for the entire homogeneous orbit. So typically, in terms of analytical methods, one will take a concrete section and study locally what's going on, how the, the orbits return to a neighborhood of, uh, of the equilibrium and to a, neighbor, uh, to a neighborhood of the homogeneous uh, orbit. And probably one will take further reductions to 1D maps to analyze, for example, the existence of chaos, etc. But this here is uh, giving us only local information. It's in the neighborhood of this, of this loop. Okay? It doesn't tell us what's going on outside a sufficiently small neighborhood that one typically uses in theorems and proofs. Uh, so, uh, uh, luckily for us, uh, the certain uh, very well established uh, numerical uh, routines implemented, in, for example, in uh, software packages just such as Auto. Uh, uh, Auto is, uh, for those of you who haven't heard about it, it's, uh, it's a package built in the late 70s, early 80s by Eusebius Dudo, uh, currently at Concordia, Montreal, uh, for basically uh, continuation and detection of bifurcations of, uh, in dynamical systems. And it, also, it also do some, th some tricks with uh, some kind of uh, PDEs. Uh, and there's also a, a companion called HomeCont, which is a package for also, for, well, in this case specifically for homogeneous bifurcations, which is already implemented uh, uh, in Auto. There's also another, well, other packages that one can use, such as MathCont, uh, and many others which are actually built on Auto, and uh, they're probably more uh, user friendly than Auto. Um, well, uh, to use this, uh, these packages, uh, there are several ways to detect a homogeneous uh, bifurcation and then to continue it in parameter space to, to trace a bifurcation curve, for example, in uh, two or more parameters depending on the, uh, the co-dimension of, of the singularity. And uh, at each uh, all along, there are test functions uh, included uh, in these uh, this packages to check, for example, genericity and transversality conditions and or in order to check the, the co-dimension, uh, if we uh, meet co higher co-dimension points along the bifurcation curve, for example. Okay. Um, but we also have a problem of uh, computing two-dimensional invariant manifolds. So, analytically, one can, uh, uh, one can obtain uh, just local representations of, uh, of a, for example, a two-dimensional invariant manifold either stable or unstable uh, via a, a power series approximation because it's just, just local. We want to uh, make a more global study. So for that uh, we can uh, uh, use a, well, uh, also a computational uh, approach and we will consider the two-dimensional global manifold as a collection of, in this case, a collection of orbit segments okay, which all of them satisfy a well-posed uh, two-point boundary value problem. Okay? There are several methods to, to compute uh, uh, two-dimensional or higher-dimensional manifolds. This, this is the one we're going to use today. So the general setting is to well, numerically uh, solve the differential equation in this case, which is, this is just a rescale version of the same uh, equation. And uh, basically uh, to pose uh, uh, suitable boundary conditions on uh, on the, the two uh, endpoints of each uh, uh, orbit segment. For example, since this is a, a stable manifold, one might, which, uh, might want to uh, fix the, the one of the endpoints very close to the uh, equilibrium uh, along uh, 
on, on a very well, on a, on a suitable set, very close to the equilibrium. In this case, uh, we have the, uh, the stable manifold theorem, which says that this two-dimensional manifold is going to be tangent to the linear uh, stable eigenspace. So we're going to fix our boundary condition, or uh, this endpoint, on this linear approximation, okay, but very close to the equilibrium as a, as a first uh, approximation. And then basically one can uh, uh, integrate in time, backwards in time, in, or in negative time, okay, until we obtain a, a first orbit segment. And then basically uh, we can uh, continue okay, this orbit segment in, in order to, uh, to get a whole family which is going to be our uh, approximation of, of our manifold. Okay, and, and well, this, this method is uh, it's very flexible in the sense that, for example, for the second endpoint, one can, uh, for example, um, uh, consider it free and just integrate up to certain uh, integration time or up to certain uh, arc length okay, for our, our orbit segment, or just fix uh, this point to lie on a suitable. Uh, section or two dimensional section in phase space. Okay. So you're just you're, you're assuming one of those last three conditions, right? Not all of them. Uh, well there has to be a certain number of uh, conditions in order to the, the problem to be well posed in the sense that we have a uniqueness of solutions of the boundary right problem. So for example one of the options is fixed integration time. Another option is to fix acting. Right. I mean you, you, you wouldn't be exclusive. To yeah, but uh, one can uh, play with uh, with them in if we uh, if we. Um, You're finding the same initial segments of curves either way it would be fixed. Yeah, but with, 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 with different with different uh, conditions. Well, technically, it, well, they, they are the same or, uh, orbits, okay, but calculated up to different uh, well, say conditions. I mean, either all the orbits uh, uh, are longer. I mean, have the same arc length, or they are integrated up to certain uh, integration time, or all the endpoints lie on a.